All right, and in this video, we'll go over basic EQ um, equalization for a vocal channel. Uh, and the, the concept is basically the same as EQing a, an instrument, but you got to keep, keep in mind that the vocal is doesn't take up a whole lot of space um, in the frequency spectrum. So you, you'll, you'll be looking pretty much... Uh, in the mid-range for the vocals, and I'll, I'll break that down a little bit in just a moment. So here is, um, I got Alex vocals selected, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this uh, EQ and reset it, and turn off the low cut. So I will turn on his channel. You're rich and love and you're so All right, and from there, what I'll do is um, we'll make sure the EQ is active, like I said uh, on the other video for uh, instruments. You can do that by either selecting here or turning on the EQ with this uh, rightmost button. So let's keep it on. Um, I always start... I always start EQ with a low cut, because I know most channels are going to need a low cut uh, because there's nothing in the low frequency uh, that will benefit the sound. So I'll turn this up just a hair so we can listen to it. 10,000 years and then forevermore. So if I turn the low cut up all the way, it's a pretty drastic change, so I'll dial that back to maybe around about the point where I don't think it's going to affect his voice much more. So I think that's about right. Because uh, Alex's voice isn't going to have a whole lot, actually no information below 100 hertz, because that's basically that region is just reserved for you know bass guitars or kick drums or maybe a piano. And I know he's playing piano, but, you know, we don't want that signal to come through his vocal microphone. And the next thing uh, I want to be able to, you know, take a moment to edit is, uh, let's go to, uh, let's take the first band, and I'll slip, move that forward a little bit. And like I said earlier, the one of the best ways you can EQ is just turn up a band really, really high. Sweep it. So that sounds kind of uh, kind of aggressive right there. So I will I'll tune that down or so. So like I, I call this the uh, search and destroy method, where you basically you you raise a frequency up really really high, and you can do that with these knobs over here as well. So you turn that up, and we'll narrow down the Q. Q just stands for quality. So how wide the bandwidth is, and the bandwidth is how wide of uh, how many frequencies will be affected. So if I narrow this down, it allows us to uh, select just a few frequencies that we can edit without you know going overboard and having a very, very wide selection, because this will affect a whole lot of things we don't want to affect. So I'll narrow that back down to maybe four or five or so. I'll sweep that around and I'll start the track over again. Sounds like he's doing an instrumental. There we go.
So I can tell, I'm going to take this back down to zero, I can tell that the bulk of his voice lies in this range. It's kind of a mid-range, it's not really a low frequency or a high frequency, um, although his voice does have high frequency information. Like whenever he sings, uh, the word sing, the s sound is uh, up here. And if his voice does seem a little bit uh, dull or, you know, not necessarily, it's not as, it doesn't sound as good as it does in real life or in person. Um, that might be because um, the high frequencies from his voice are being masked out or, you know, covered up by maybe the piano or an acoustic guitar or something that, you know, also has information in this range. So what you can do is uh, either go to a higher band of frequencies and raise the high end from his vocals, which might help his, uh, you know, his vocals cut through the mix a little bit. Um, and likewise, you can do the same thing on other channels, except maybe lower their high frequencies. Like, I know the, um, the bass guitar will not have a whole lot of information up here, because it, it lives down here in the low, low end. So the bass guitar doesn't have a whole lot of information up here that we need. So we could even go to the bass guitar channel and select the high band and lower the frequencies of that channel to make room for vocals on the uh, other vocal channels. So here's Alex's vocals. I'll go back to the bass. We cut down the bass in this region to help make more room for the vocals. And that is basic EQ for a vocal channel. Um, keep in mind that EQ will only improve what is already there. So if you are EQing a vocal <clears throat> and you think, well, it, it doesn't really sound as full as it can down low, uh, let's say down in the 300, 200 hertz range, like down here, uh, and you look on the spectrograph, and there's the spectrograph is like the uh, the little graph that shows where the frequencies are, uh, or the bar graph. If you look down here, and there's nothing down here, then it, there's a pretty good chance that maybe boosting this will not necessarily help, because that mean that means there's nothing down here to start with, and EQ cannot add something that's not there. It can only affect what is currently present uh, in the signal. So I'll bring this back down to zero. And those are the basic guidelines of EQing vocals that I would do my best to follow. And uh, I know all this might seem a little bit complex at front, um, but you can watch this video over and over again and you know you might get another piece of information the second or third time you watch it. Um, but you know EQ doesn't change a whole lot per instrument or vocals. It's all gonna be about the same. It's, it's the same concepts. Um, EQ, on, it, EQ enhances uh, things that you do want to present well in the signal, and it can take away things you don't want uh, emphasized, which is why we use a low cut to take out the rumble from a microphone or uh, you know other stage noise. And we use EQ to take out maybe feedback areas, like you can notch out feedback um, to help make the sound more clear. And that's EQ for vocals.